without the IMF program, we, we would probably default. Let's be honest. But if you listened to the, all the statements that have been made even by our people, Susan and others, the, finance, the CS Finance, the governor in Marrak the IMF in Marrakesh and all of that, as of now, the 2024 euro bond is fully funded. The refinancing is fully funded. We know the markets are closed. Uh, there's an IMF mission in town uh, by the end. But by and large, the commitments we have, we have to come through with a couple of things. Uh, but the reason why we are doing that is because the IMF has facilities. It, is an, it can augment our program as of now up to $650 million that they've agreed to do. Uh, they can also give us access to something called an exceptional window uh, in the event. So we have access to the entire IMF balance sheet. So whatever else people think about the IMF, that's why it exists. Yeah? The IMF exists to help countries that are actually implementing the right policies to maintain global financial stability. And this euro bond maturity is probably a global financial stability issue uh, for not just ours, but this whole thing. So uh, it is not just our problem. It, it can be a very significant problem. Uh, therefore, we have actually been very proactive in ensuring that uh, we secure all the funding uh, needed uh, and also to do some liability management, as you're saying, that's a strategy thing. We'll probably be doing either some early uh, sort of redemption or buyback or something like that by the end of the year, so as to improve the chances also of being able to go to the market uh, if the markets are open. Uh, I hope that uh, kind of settles that uh, question once and for all. There are, of course, people who are interested in creating uncertainty uh, because volatility is good for trading. Uh, so those ones will not stop. <laughs> now, uh, on privatization, I am, we, if you had followed, we have changed the privatization law. Since the privatization law that we have repealed was established, no privatization has happened. Because it was established actually to kind of forestall. It was a very, uh, so we have changed that so that we can do privatization. So we will be doing quite a bit of privatization, but that privatization will not solve your immediate problem. It's a slow process. You have to prepare uh, companies uh, for listing. Uh, our law is such that only companies have been profitable, can, you can put on the market. Others you have to restructure, do all manner of things, but we're working on something which will probably be able to do uh, something quite innovative in the next couple of months. But privatization is not going to put cash in your pocket in six months. Yeah? It's sort of something, it's a structural sort of workout, but, but we're going to be uh, doing it. I think the question of mitigating default, we've talked about it. I don't know, sort of... Uh, the question of uh, providing capital, what are we doing? Um, given the financial situation, if you look at what has happened, uh, the kind of uh, liquidity crunch that you have imposes certain constraints. Uh, given illustration, when we did the budget, the debt service, uh, if you look at the budget, the debt service uh, budgeted cost, uh, and you look at what it is now, based on interest rate and exchange rate movements, the amount of debt service cost for this financial year has gone up by 150 billion shillings already. And of course, if those prices continue moving, you are probably looking at a figure in the order of 200 billion that you hadn't pl planned for. That means you have to go to the market uh, to refinance. So your debt operations then impose very severe constraints. So the one thing that you cannot rely on at this point in time is channeling more capital to the private sector. 
because you can't more credit to the private sector hence again the reason why we chose to focus on agriculture as the kickstart sector because agriculture is not very dependent on finance a smallholder agriculture is not very dependent on finance in fact what farmers need more than anything else is access to inputs and also certain things so that can actually kickstart your economy as i said six billion shillings is able to get you an extra 15 million bags of maize if you try and put this in manufacturing by the time you expand your plant and all manner of things and probably get your products to market uh, you know it's sort of two three years down the road uh, so that is but there's a logic on how you ask yourself how do you navigate this uh, kind of situation uh, how do you sequence uh, things uh, so the sequencing you go for the sectors that don't require capital another especially sectors that have excess capacity another sector which has had a lot of excess capacity and the governor talked about it tourism so we're doing a lot of things that uh, people have been resisted doing in the past primarily uh, to protect uh, Kenya Airways like opening up the skies uh, opening up Mombasa for uh, other sort of foreign airlines and the sort of uh, budget travels we've done that I saw the industry saying that that's actually working because the tourism hotel the hotels have the rooms uh, the all they need to do is to put uh, uh, people on on those beds uh, and that that stimulates also consumption so you go for the sectors that don't require a uh, new capital investment and then that then allows you to to scale up to uh, to other sectors so there's a sequencing uh, that you need to think through how you navigate yourself through that 